It's not just about perhaps a slow game where a pitcher takes a while to throw the ball towards the plate. It, it's not about that. There's so much to it that I love. What does it mean to me? Uh, I know it's the, the cliche to answer. Uh, it's hard not to say everything. My name is Andy Brown. Um, I am a British artist and I paint baseball. Um, I mostly paint baseball uh, in ballparks live around the world. We've heard of folks traveling across America to visit all the ballparks. And it's one thing to visit all the ballparks, another thing to visit them all and paint them all, and yet another thing to come from London, England to do just that. My name is Andy Brown and I'm originally from the UK. I currently live in Korea and I've lived there for about 10 years now and um, I'm a painter, I'm an artist, so I travel around the world painting baseball and sports. I found baseball in Korea. I was, I was living in Korea uh, from 2009 until 2019. I was invited along to a game when I lived in Busan. The uh, Lotte Giants play in Sajik Stadium, which is in Busan. And I went along with my friends to watch a game and it was great. As a Brit, it's uh, not the usual thing necessarily to, to watch baseball, be a baseball fan, or be interested in it, or read about it, or want to learn about it. Um, but as my as my love for the game grew, and my interest in the great game grew, and my own body of work grew, you know, I, I painted all the stadiums in. Obviously, I've painted all of them uh, over in Japan and Korea and Taiwan, China. Um, you know, I painted many leagues all around the world, and then it got to the point I've done a few independent ballparks in the States, I've done a few major league ballparks in the States, a few minor league ballparks in the States, and then I got to the point when I thought, well, you know, if I'm, it's, it's time to do all 30 major league. I mean, that, that was a trip that I don't think anybody's done and painted. I think people go to all 30 ballparks, of course, but uh, to record it in my way, I thought it was just the next, the next part of my journey as an artist was, okay, right, I need to go to the, the home of baseball. That's coming along nicely. And while I've been working on that, I've also been doing the pieces that you can see, or some of the pieces that you can see up on the, the line. You know, the 30 MLB were superb. I mean, it was it was a fantastic trip to have done, and uh, you know, it was brilliant. It was absolutely amazing. As soon as you start, you open your mouth and you start talking, then then I think people who are um, yeah, they're kind of interested or they're um, yeah, they're taken aback by the fact that you're you're a Brit who's into baseball. All the greatest stories are in baseball, and uh, you know, you pick a theme, you pick a topic. There'll be some example of that in baseball in a baseball game. My name is Josh Chetwind. Previously, I've written a number of books, including a couple on European baseball, as well as serving as the uh, co-host of a television show on Channel Five called uh, MLB on Five, which broadcasts Major League Baseball games. Well, the first baseball that was really known to be played in the UK uh, occurred in 1874, and there was a tour uh, between the Boston Red Stockings and the Philadelphia Athletics, which spurred some minor domestic play. But things really stuck after a tour in 1889 and 1890. a former player, a former uh, baseball magnet, and an equipment manufacturer. And he did a world tour and made Great Britain a big stop. And not only did he show off baseball in a very nice way, the Prince of Wales came to a game and watched it, and it was very exciting. Uh, they also played some cricket, where the baseball players would play some cricket. But he tried to lay down roots for baseball. And in 1890, there was a professional league there, and a lot of uh, non-professional baseball had started to be played. And what happened, and the reason baseball had a, a nice run into the start of the 20th century, were there a lot of football clubs that decided this would be a great off-season sport for us, for our players to play. 
Sir John Moores, who uh, was sort of a very prominent uh, industrialist, uh, did pools as well. He was based in Liverpool, did gambling pools. He traveled to the U.S. and uh, met with the president of the National League, one of the two major leagues of baseball, and uh, was challenged to try and start baseball. And he took up that challenge. He liked the sport. He thought it was an attractive game uh, and started off in the Liverpool area. Even Dixie Dean played baseball and one of the great footballers of that era. And when you have someone of that repute, someone with a little bit of pull, it helps the sport. And he was able to drive a lot of other businessmen to see baseball as a potentially commercial endeavor. And one of the reasons why it was successful is that they were able to get really good venues for baseball. They would use primarily dog tracks. Uh, and so these were like really nice stadiums. And even though the dimensions of these stadiums were not really meant for baseball, they were able to kind of shoehorn in the sport there and create it as a spectacle. So people would want to go because, hey, it's this new sort of different sport. And it was an era where people were sort of open to that. And um, these were big stadiums where they could kind of sell it in, in sort of a fun and active way. And so you'd really get thousands of people to come out to games during this period. A series played between the United States and England, uh, an English team, but made primarily of Canadian players, uh, in which ultimately that competition was considered the first World Cup. So England won the first ever World Cup of baseball. Despite the growth of the professional game in Britain in the 1930s, interest in the sport in this country would stagnate after the Second World War. In fact, it wasn't until 50 years later that interest in the sport would finally pick up again in the 1990s. Shows like MLB on 5 were crucial as baseball tried to reclaim a place in British culture. Good evening fellow baseball nuts and a very warm World Series welcome to Programme 56. I think one of the greatest values of MLB on 5 was that it was terrestrial television. And I'm joined by the Penguin himself, the man who was born to wear a black tie. JC, lovely to see you. Gouldy, I cannot tell you how excited I am for this matchup. So people could, in the middle of the night, if you couldn't sleep, you turn on the TV and you're looking for something you could happen upon baseball. And some people probably looked at it and said, no, it's not for me. But so many people would see it and be transfixed and interested in the sport that they had never seen before. There's so many college students, particularly, you come home from a night at the pub, you turn on the TV and you're like, oh, what is this sport? And it was such a great honor to try and help explain the game to people who hadn't seen it before. It was a challenge too, of course, uh, because it's, you know, there's some similarities with sports like cricket and other bat and ball sports, but it's a very different game as well. And I really took that opportunity as an honor and a challenge and loved every minute of it. Loved trying to find that delicate balance uh, between being sophisticated enough that you never patronize to the audience, but being simple enough so that if you had never seen the sport, it could be interesting and you could come in and actually experience it. Similar to baseball's popularity in the 1930s, the success of the show was relatively short-lived and after 11 years of production, the show was officially cancelled. Despite this, the small number of players that still play baseball in this country today are some of the most passionate competitors in the country and to some, the game is more than just a sport. My name is Matthew Mutton and I am the host, uh, researcher, editor, producer and all round dude for the British Baseball Podcast. Uh, six, Sarah Leftfield. Seven, Shane Rightfield. Uh, eight, uh, pitcher Josh. And nine is Robin, first base. There's this very strange um, sort of vibe about baseball. You mentioned you play baseball in this country, in the UK, and people go, you play baseball in Britain. It's finding, it's finding your technique. Yeah. Yeah. Finding what works. Yeah. For me. I mean, you've got the basic I had a head injury a couple of years ago. 
and it affected my uh, smell, my taste, my memory, my concentration, my ability to focus on things. It is it's really like big roller coaster of, of just things like my, my whole personality has changed. And baseball, I sort of I think it found me because I wasn't really looking for it. It just sort of stumbled across it uh, in Manchester. And since I've been there, I've noticed improvements in my hand-eye coordination uh, and my focus because that's one of the things that the game sort of teaches. Like if you're trying to field and catch and, and hitting a ball and making adjustments to try and get the ball, those sort of things. Have, and I, I've noticed, it, it could, I'm not saying that baseball is the, the cure and if you're feeling depressed or or you have anxiety attacks or a head injury, you should go out and find your newest baseball club because it will work. Um, but I've noticed improvements in some levels of concentration and focus and, and memory since I've started playing. So it could be the whole exercise thing. It could just be being outdoors in a nice open space, getting some nice sun when normally be inside and not doing anything. And all of a sudden I found those people from all different walks of life all different backgrounds and we all share that one thing in common of baseball and we're all finding new ways to to find to, um new things about it so I, I feel like i've gained an entirely new set of friends and it's been brilliant it's uh it's some confidence the world of good and uh, i feel miles better for playing it's like whenever the, the pandemic kicked in and i thought baseball training was going to be cancelled didn't know when it's coming back it sent my heart racing A lot of people ask me why I like baseball, and I and I guess that is a, a a phrase, a question that a lot of people ask, especially when you live in Britain. Baseball just has there's a, there's a flow to it that I love. There's the sounds, and I know this sounds really cliche, but this was this year was my first trip to spring training, and I got to go to Sloan Park where the Cubs play, and it was those sounds that you hear that really resonate. So batting practice, for example, and you hear the crack of the bat. The players, the way they just stand around in groups and talk. Obviously, the weather is always usually great. The food that you get at a ballpark. This is the $26 burger pizza. The fact that you can go there for three or four hours, sit with your friends, have a laugh, watch the game. And there's such a beauty to baseball. There's such a traditional about it. The gloves and the way they were made back in the day, the diamond, the base pads. The fact that they chew tobacco, spitting seeds, it, there's so much to it. There's so many layers to baseball that I, I think people just don't quite appreciate. It's not just about perhaps a slow game where a pitcher takes a while to throw the ball towards the, the plate. It, it's not about that. There's so much to it that I love. There's a, there's a depth to it that I don't know other sports always have. And I think coming as, a, as an outsider, coming into it, makes it even more interesting coming to it late, coming to it as an outsider. Um, you can really examine, you know, the, the the actual game itself, the people who play it, the uh, the atmosphere, the culture it's with, it's part of. Um, so I think it's I think it's really like a to me I always see it like as a bigger extension of life. There's a lot of storylines being played out um, on the field, which um, I think I, I enjoy watching. I enjoy recording, painting, documenting, and being part of this. Um, you know, trying to contribute, I guess, to this uh, this um, this game and its its legacy. It's absolutely phenomenal to witness the commitment that our players make. Um, players traveling down from Scotland to play at Farnham Park. Uh, players from Brighton traveling up to Coventry, which is a hike. So one thing I can say about the baseball and softball community in Britain, and particularly the baseball community, is they are incredibly passionate. They do this for the love of the game. I, I am incredibly fortunate in that I get paid to help develop the sport. And I'm, I'm incredibly aware of that. The people who I work with on a day in day out basis who aren't in our organization do it because they love the game. They put their hours of time, energy, money, especially right now during a pandemic, we have people traveling across the country following all COVID precautions to make sure that they can play. They are that passionate about the sports. Could success with the national team grow interest in the sport in this country? And how do we grow the game here so that we can ensure that the Great Britain national team can remain competitive in international fixtures? Two players made their big league debuts. Blake Taylor 
uh, a left-handed pitcher with the Houston Astros, and Jazz Chisholm, the shortstop with the Miami Marlins. When we compare uh, ourselves to the, the countries that we're trying to uh, get level with and then ultimately overcome uh, or surpass in, in tournaments and rankings, uh, they have significantly more budget, more resources than we do. It being a very niche sport, uh, I don't think British baseball is big enough to, to uh, there's not enough, enough youth participation to supply the adult leagues from within, let alone supply a national team's program from within. And that's why we've leaned on, since roughly 1996, we've leaned on uh, overseas-based citizens in order to have success. Uh, and that's not going to change until there's a much bigger uh, number of kids playing. There are no doubt some tremendous opportunities available to the British player, but it's largely going to be a it's luck of the draw based on where they live. Um, there are tremendous clubs all throughout the country. There are some tremendous coaches all throughout the country, but there's every chance that you live nowhere near a baseball club. While you're playing in the UK, the amateur level is quite good. Uh, but that's what it is, it's an amateur sport. Uh, at, in the US, there's the professional side of things where it's multi-billions of, of dollars that are invested into players and facilities. And um, the, the equivalent over here, of course, would be what happens with the Premiership. We're not there yet in the UK. Do I think that the level of play uh, in the United Kingdom could be at the semi-pro, maybe in the low independent pro level? Yes, I do. Of course, British baseball, the, the GB baseball team is ranked 34th in, in the world, which is very high. Uh, not their highest ever, I believe their highest ever was 31, but they're 34. We've had multiple British-born players for the Marlins and um, a couple other teams in the past 10 years coming from that amateur um, GB system. I think we need to increase participation in baseball in the UK. We need to get better facilities like um, Pranham Park, but across the country, or maybe at pivotal points in the north and the middle, and then you've got Farnham in the south, uh, and then in Wales and in Scotland too. We'd also need to have Team G competition and games highlighted and broadcast. The more exposure we can get um, for the sport, the greater chances we could get getting people interested. If we are successful, there will be more media coverage. Uh, and I, th I think the media, the, the country as a whole, yearns for uh, being able to celebrate national successes, regardless of the field, uh, sporting or otherwise. So I think it would be inevitable that we'd capture some, some mainstream attention. I thought when the the women's fast pitch team um, has, has had success in the last couple of years, were one, one win away from qualifying for the Olympics and they captured some mainstream attention. You saw it on the BBC, for example. I think the same would follow for us, um, and, and hopefully that would impact uh, participation or at least interest levels. It's an exciting time to be a baseball fan here in this country. Major League Baseball has decided there's potential to grow a market here in the United Kingdom and is looking to expand the sport. Its decision to host regular season Major League Baseball games at the London Stadium could be absolutely massive for the future of this sport. I was involved with Major League Baseball UK as a video producer three years ago and I worked on that battleground for them and I remember MLB sitting in this meeting with us saying you know our goal is to have a game over here a series and I, and I sat there thinking well how are they going to do that because it's not like the NFL there are so many games they have to get back to America to play another series I just didn't know how it was going to work I didn't know where they were going to play who was going to go and see it etc they pulled it off the, the, the home run derby was one thing. The game itself was an absolute success. And I know that MLB in the, in the UK office were obviously anxious about the success of it. I was so excited. I couldn't believe that we were able to go and see a baseball game in the UK. I don't think the last year's London series could have gone any better. 
I, I think the biggest thing that shows that the market is there, that the MLB uh, London Series proved, is that the British public has an appetite for baseball. Not only were they sold out games, they were the best attended Major League Baseball games. Not international Major League Baseball games, but the best attended Major League Baseball games since 2003. On top of that, 80% of the tickets sold were to a British audience. What that tells me is that of the 60 odd thousand people they welcomed into the stadium, the vast majority were British, were interested in the game, and were interested in, and had, by buying tickets had shown that they're willing to spend a decent, more than a decent amount of money to watch this sport. Two premier teams sold out, they did record numbers in merchandise, in attendance. It, it shows that there is a huge hunger for the game here in the UK. When they brought the Red Sox and the Yankees over, it was a statement. They said, we're not going to bring over the Jaguars and the Texans. We're going to bring over the big dogs. This is one of the biggest rivalries in American sports, in sports history around the world. And people understood that. See, the hardcore fans were, were pleased. They were satisfied with what MLB did. If, if people are traveling from the continent over here to watch that game, they're happy with it. I have friends in America that came over to watch those games. It was an absolute success. From the food, um, all the all the branding was brilliant. I thought that the pitch looked great, the field, I should say. Everything worked. And I was really happy surprised. There was a heat wave as well, which, which does help. Everything was good. And the layout was fantastic inside. And hearing the organ, hearing the introductions, the players, the uniforms on the field, those clean white uniforms, Fantastic. So the more we can get going forward, the better. I had the opportunity to broadcast those games for BT Sport. So I was in the stadium for both those games and the amount of enthusiasm and excitement for baseball was palpable. And so if there is an opportunity, there were supposed to be games this year because of the COVID pandemic that they didn't occur. But if baseball were to come back and to come back in a sustained fashion at that level with that financial support and I know it was very expensive but to do that and to be a lost leader it would be huge. I feel like the British fans tend to be quite hardcore they're quite into it because they, they re you really have to be you have to be quite dedicated and quite committed. In MLB the focus is not just the UK it's Europe so they might send another series over here example they were supposed to have the Cubs and the Cardinals this year they'll bring them they'll try and do that again I know next season there won't be any because of the new CBA, but I think their plans are bigger. The challenge now is to take that huge hunger for the game, the professional game. The t I mean, let's face it, Yankees and Red Sox is top class, top flight. You're not going to get any better than that rivalry. How do we take that excitement and turn that into a game uh, on a field in a town in England, in Wales, in Scotland, in Northern Ireland. How do we do that? Regardless of what MLB does, our role, our job has not changed. It's still our job to grow baseball and softball in the United Kingdom from the 27,000 people who play now and the 4,000 odd teams that exist to be one of the, to be a larger presence within the United Kingdom, within Sporting England and within the sports structure. What the London series proved is that there's that appetite at the professional level. What the London series also proved is about a thousand people signed up to play after the uh, London series, and that's through various clubs, teams, that's across the whole spectrum. So it did bring awareness. It's now our job to elevate that awareness and bring it down to that grassroots level. And that's, that's really what we're focusing on right now. I think people probably have capitalized on the MLB London series because I did. I, I did that. I saw it and I got involved. I would love to know uh, what kind of uptick, uptick in uh, interest MLB saw, uh, BSUK saw, the Federation saw uh, when it was played last year. The, the common comparison is the NFL uh, and looking 10, 15 years after they made the commitment to London, uh, they have an academy for players now uh, in North London. They have, uh, I think Sky are just launching a of American football only channel. Um, so if, if Major League Baseball are willing and able to, to make a commitment to London series, and I, I think it would be tough to expect it to be every season three times like the NFL is. Just if they were to come here every few years, I think, I think it would be inevitable that we'd see more baseball in the, uh, in the limelight more often. I think we could be talking about something special uh, where 
the the national team can be uh, uh, contributed to more uh, from within, where there are uh, adult leagues fed from within, uh, just much more sustainability, and and maybe there's even that regular magazine television show. Um, on the flip side, uh, British baseball does seem to be hung on a on a, a secular uh, histor historical timeline rather than a a linear one. We we make mistakes that continue to happen. British baseball's popularity will never be able to compete with the traditional British sports. Football, cricket and rugby will remain king here in the future. But ask any baseball fan in Britain, and I'm sure they will tell you, baseball is everything to them. From Lou Gehrig's speech, Jackie Robinson's stand against racial hatred, or the 71-year-long Billy Goat curse of the Chicago Cubs, Baseball is truly a special sport. As the late great baseball umpire Bill Clem once said, baseball is more than just a sport, it's a religion. Take me out to the